Hello guys, and today we're going to make it so our character can aim down the sights and it will zoom in the camera and instantiate a crosshair on the screen, or activate one rather, and you will actually look in the direction you're aiming. So first let's go over onto the player manager. We need to know when we're aiming, so let's make a flag for letting us know when we're aiming. Under player flags we will make a bool, a public bool called is aiming, and we will save that. Next we're going to carry it over to the animator as well. We'll make a parameter called is aiming. Again, it will be a bool. And then we actually have to enable this bool, or parameter rather, on the input manager when we actually hit a button. So let's go over to the input manager, or I mean, sorry, the player manager first, and say is aiming is equal to animator.getBool is aiming. And this is on the update function of the player manager. And then let's actually make an input on the input manager that actually enables or disables aiming for us. So if we go over now and hit our player controls, uh, object down here and we're going to add a new action map called player actions and inside this action map we're going to make a button and I'm just going to call mine aim so again the goal of this is to make it so whenever we hit the aim button it just activates this aiming parameter I'm going to assign the binding of the right mouse to mine so if I hold down on the right mouse I will go into an aiming stance I'll save that and then open up the input manager okay so now let's go into the input manager and right here we have button inputs. I'm just going to say right below quick turn input. I'm going to say public bull aiming input. And then on enable, we're going to do the same thing we usually do, but we're going to do something a little bit different. Usually we just say uh, player controls at whatever equals true. We're going to say player controls dot player actions dot aim dot performed plus equals I equals greater than aiming input equals true. But then we're also going to add another line of code. It's going to say the exact same thing, but instead of saying performed, it will say canceled. And instead of saying true, it will say false. And all this does is basically just makes it so if we're holding down the button, it will be true. But if you let it go, uh, it turns to false, which is perfect for things like aiming. Okay, next down here, let's actually make a function. So let's say private void handle aiming input or handle aim input, whatever you prefer. And let's make some logic in here. So we don't want our character to be able to aim while we're moving because you can't do that in Resident Evil. So the first thing we're going to do is make a check if we're entering this function to see if we're moving. So we'll say if vertical movement input does not equal zero or if our horizontal movement input does not equal zero, uh, then we're going to say return and we can actually just say aiming input equals false as well right above that. And that will just bring us back out of here. And we're also going to say animator.setBool is aiming and we'll say it false. And then we can just say return. So if we're moving, we won't run any of the logic in this function below this point. Next, we are going to say if aiming input, and we'll open up our brackets here for some code else. So if we are aiming or if our aim input, sorry, is held down, we're going to say animator dot set bull is aiming is equal to true. That in turn will change the player manager to true because the player manager gets its bull status from the animator on the update function. Else, we're going to change it to false. And now we should have a way to detect if we're aiming. Under handle, handle all inputs, we're going to say handle aiming inputs. And we're going to save that. Okay, now if we come to the game here and press play, if I hold down on the right mouse button, you will see the is aiming bool and the animator gets triggered to true. And that triggers the aiming or is aiming on the player manager to true. If I let go of the mouse, it actually disables the aiming input, which disables the two bulls. Now make sure you have the parameters in the animator spelled exactly the same, otherwise it will not work for you. So it is case sensitive. Next on the player locomotion manager, we need to actually change how we rotate. So we're going to simply say if player manager dot is aiming do something else do our normal rotation logic. Because in games like Resident Evil, you actually rotate towards the direction you're aiming. Um, this doesn't actually need any movement because you can't move while you're aiming. So we're just going to copy uh, target rotation and player rotation and paste that here. And then we're going to copy transform dot rotation equals prior rotation because you move automatically while you are aimed down a site and we can save that and now if we actually jump into the game and I hold down the aiming key and I turn the mouse you'll see our character actually rotates in the direction that we are aiming so it's already looking a whole lot better and now we can just keep on adding on to this so let's add some more functionality to the aiming input like zooming down over the shoulder while you're aiming and we can do that by going to the camera, the player camera script, 
and making a, I'm gonna make a header first to describe what these objects are because the naming could get a little ambiguous here in the future. I'm gonna make a header and call this camera follow targets. This is just stands for things the camera will follow. Um, and I'm gonna put some crosses here and say, or slashes rather and say it follows the player while we are not aiming. And then I'll make a public transform. You can use a game object too if you want. I'm gonna call this aimed camera position. And I'm going to put some slashes and say follows the or follows this position while we are aimed. Um, what you can do basically is create an empty game object and put it over the, uh, over the shoulder of your character, which I will do, and then the camera can follow that while we're aiming. So if I go down to the spine here, you can go to the uh, the clavicle or the shoulder, whatever you want, and then just basically create an empty game object under this. And you're gonna have to play around the values a whole lot because this will be entirely different based on your model and what you want the camera to feel like. I'm just going to call it um, camera's aim position. And then what you want to do is just basically position it um, a bit in front of the player and to the right. Because remember, our camera is actually parented under the player camera game object. And it is pushed back a little bit. So you want to push it forward from the player and to the right just a little. And then on the player camera script, just drag in that transform. And again, just play with the values a bunch and find something that you like. So down on the player or follow player function on the player camera script, we're going to say if player manager dot is aiming, uh, we're going to call some logic. And if not, we're going to use the old logic and we don't have our player manager referenced here. So let's actually make a variable of type player manager. And what I'm going to do also is uh, I'm going to call this player manager. I'm going to actually make the input manager private. And what we can do is we can make an awake method here. And since we already have our player game object, dragged in there that we follow, we can say input manager is equal to player dot get component input manager. And it will just get the game object of the player that we follow. And then we can reference that and get the input manager. And uh, then we can actually say player manager is equal to player dot get component player manager. Okay, and that should work fine. And now we can reference the player manager and we can say if we are aiming, well, we want to make the camera follow the aim position. And if we're not aiming, we want to make the camera follow the player position. So let's just copy the old logic right here now, and then we can make an else or an else statement. And we'll paste it in there because this logic is still fine to use if we're not aiming, nothing has changed here. And then if we are aiming, we can copy this and paste it in here, but we change the player dot transform position. We can change that to aim to camera position dot transform dot position. So now it will follow that instead. And we save that and that should work fine. Now, if I aim in the site here, you can see it is a little bit over the shoulder, just as you want it. And I'm going to tweak this continually throughout the video until I get it to a place where I really think it's perfect. But that's not bad right now. But you see if I rotate up and down, we don't want that. Now, you see how we're going like way up and way down? This is actually because the camera itself is not rotating, but the pivot is. And since the camera is rested under the pivot, now it gives it this uh, this wider rotation. And that's great when you're not aiming on the sights. But if you're aiming on the sights, what you actually want is to rotate the camera object itself. And this is a very easy fix. So again, we're going to start off with some very simple logic. Again, we're going to say if player manager dot is aiming, and we're going to keep this very nice, straightforward, and clean. Um, we're going to apply a logic if we are aiming. We're going to apply the old logic if we are not aiming. So we'll simply say if is aiming, and then else, and then in the else we'll paste everything we have here. Copy and paste. And now we can paste that uh, on the is aiming as well because we're only going to change a couple of things. So first off, we're going to delete the quick turn logic because in the future, I'm going to disable quick turning while you're aiming. And then we need to actually figure out where we're making that rotation to on the X and it's the camera pivot. So instead of the camera pivot, what we want to say is the camera object dot transform dot local rotation. And that will actually rotate the camera itself, not the camera pivot object. Now, what we want to do though, is we want to reset this every time we're not aiming. Otherwise we'll have really weird um, rotations when we switch out our aiming view. So we're going to make this camera object dot transform dot local rotation equals quaternion Euler zero, zero, zero. And likewise, when we go into the aiming position, we want to reset the camera pivots rotation. Otherwise we will have obscure values as well. So all we do is we say, we copy the camera pivot up here. And at the beginning of this logic, we simply say camera pivot dot local rotation equals quaternion dot Euler zero zero zero. And then we'll, we should be fine. We should actually have the camera now rotating and not the uh, camera pivots object while we're aiming and it will give it a much nicer look. So if I zoom in now with the aim and here, yep, that feels a whole lot better. And the camera isn't 
making that wide loop and it feels like we're actually aiming down the sights of a gun. Okay, so next we actually want to make it so our character faces the direction we're aiming. So if we're aiming a bit up or a bit down, we want to give him a little nudge in that direction. Um, so for that, we're going to use animation rigging again. What you want to do is come down here to the rig layer that we made before. I'm going to rename this one to rig layer underscore hand IK. I just want to get mixed up. And I'm going to duplicate it. And I'm going to put it above this one in the hierarchy. And that's not so important uh, as the next step. But I'm going to do it because it uh, it fits in with the structure of the next step. I'm going to rename it body aiming. And then I'm going to add another component here on the rig layer. I'm going to put that one above our old one. So this is the important part. The aiming should come on top of the hand IK because this is the order that it processes it in. And we want to do our hand processes last. Okay. So next I'm going to create an empty game object under this uh, body aiming one. I'm going to call it aim spine 01. I'm going to add a multi aim constraint to this. I'm then going to duplicate this twice and make aim spine 02. And I'm going to make uh, aim head. And these are the basically the bones that we're going to affect uh, the transforms and rotations of while we're aiming. So the constraint object of each should be what I've called it spine one, spine two, and then the head. And then under the sourced object, we actually want to make the sourced object the place we want to look or the direction we want to look in. First, we want to make the source object, which I'm going to create. And the best way to do this is actually just go to your camera, right click on the camera object itself and create an empty and just call this aim target. And then put it way in front of your camera because the camera um, obviously will represent the center of the screen. This will always be in the center of the screen. And then drag that source object into the source object area of all three of these um, rig layer body parts that you have. Spine 1, Spine 2, and the head. So basically there is an aim axis. And this is the direction you want uh, the rig constraint to basically turn towards or aim towards. And that this is very important that you set this up correctly. Otherwise you're going to have your your body looking very um, strange or it could be just a little bit off but i actually messed up in this video a little bit so so on my model the head should be on the z-axis the spine two should be on the y-axis and the spine one should be on the negative z-axis not the negative y-axis i actually messed up in this video i fixed it later though if you're confused on which axes your model should be on i will link a video in the description where a gentleman does a very good job at explaining it now you might have noticed a few seconds ago, if we aim in the site, we can't actually go up or down all that much. And that's actually for a reason you might not think. So if we go back into the code, we have this variable called the um, camera damp time or camera smooth time. But you see, we're actually resetting our rotation values every second or every frame in the functionality where we rotate our camera. So if this number basically is too small, um, it limits where we can look here in the camera smooth time. So what I'm going to do is add a public float and call it aimed camera smooth time and make it a value of about three seem to work perfect for me. Now, again, I'll explain why this is. If you look at our code here, you can see our camera rotation always gets turned into a vector three dot zero in the rotate camera functionality um, right here. And basically it's turning to zero faster than we can update the camera. So it we actually are unable to rotate it that further away from the point at which we start. And you, here you can see me fix the, uh, the spine on the aim axis here. But now that we've changed this to three, if I go into the game here now and aim down the sights of my gun, you can see we can look up and down quite a bit. So basically the higher that value, the more freedom you have to look. Uh, just a note for if you're using the code the way we made it right now. So now we, that we can aim down the sights and we're facing the direction in which we are aiming, which is fantastic, what do we do next? Well, we don't want our character facing it all the time. Otherwise, you have this weird thing happen where you kind of fold down your own body. We only want the character facing like so when we're aiming down the sights of the gun, not when we're not aiming. So to do that, we actually have to add some logic to our animator. We want it to enable when we're aiming and change the weights to zero or disable when we're no longer aiming. But as you can see here now, it looks pretty good. The character does aim up and down. The gun does follow the tracing point, and our head and, and torso follow it as well. So that's looking pretty awesome for an early prototype. So next, let's go to the animator manager here. And we actually need to make um, two new variables in regards to our new rig layers. So first, I'm going to make a header above this one. I'm just going to call this hand IK constraints. And that's just so we know that these things are for our weapons hand IK. Next, let's make another header. I'm going to call this aiming constraints. 
and then we're going to make two variables of public of type multi aim constraint actually three sorry uh, we're making for spine 01 spine 02 and for our head and then we'll drag those in in the inspector after we've done all of our work here writing the functionality for these so i'm just going to make some comments here for later down the road so we always know what these things do i'm just going to say these constraints turn the character towards uh, you can say the aiming points the aim target or the center of the screen whatever you want to say and then I'm going to say up here, these constraints enable our character to hold the weapon properly, or you could say to hand the weapon properly or whatever. I just like making notes like this. So when a lot of time has passed and you add a lot more code, you can come back and if you happen to forget, this should jog your memory. So we're going to make a new function. First, I'm going to make a comment above it. I'm going to say while aiming down or while aiming, sorry, our character will turn towards the, again, direction we are aiming or he is aiming. And then let's make the function. I'm going to call it public void. I'm just going to change this first towards the center of the screen is a better way of wording that. Then I'm going to say public void update aiming or aim constraints. We're going to need to know if we're aiming when we run this function. So we'll start off by saying if player manager dot is aiming, then perform some logic else perform other logic and all we're doing basically is setting numbers here so if we are aiming we want to set our constraint weight to a set that we desire so spine 01 dot weight is equal to 0.3f i said here i later changed this to 0.9 though uh, spine 02 dot weight is equal to 0.3f and head dot weight is equal to i think i said 0.7 right here and then on the else statement, we just copy and paste the entirety of that logic, but change all of those numbers to zero. So that'll make it so when we're not aiming, we let go of having to look towards the center of the screen. And we are aiming, we look towards the center of the screen. Now, next, we actually have to call this functionality. And the best place to do that will be the input manager right now. And all we're going to do right at the bottom of this function is say animator manager dot update uh, anim constraints, because regardless of what we're doing, we're going to update our constraints. So let's drag in the spine one, spine two, and the head here. And then if we press play, you should see that while we are aiming down the sights, we look towards the center of the screen. Yes, we do. Otherwise, we do not. Excellent. That looks really good. And it's really great looking for an early prototype. Okay, so we have some aiming. We zoom into the camera over the shoulder. And we are looking towards the direction we're aiming. What else do we add? Well, we need to add a crosshair in the center of the screen to let us know uh, where we are aiming exactly. So let's make a UI uh, image here and that will automatically drop in a canvas for us. I'm gonna call the image a crosshair and I've actually made a crosshair in Photoshop, just a very simple one. I'm gonna drag into, oh, I don't have it in the project right now. So I'm gonna drag in right now and I'm going to make sure the image is a sprite and 2D um, texture type. So after we do that, just hit apply if you have to do the same thing. And then I'm going to drag the crosshair into this image box. Now let's disable it at the start. And then let's on the top of the canvas, make a script called the player UI manager. And this will keep track of all of our UI elements in the future, like our ammo counts and our crosshairs, et cetera, et cetera. Next, I'm going to make a header and call this crosshair. I'm going to make a public game object called crosshair. And then I can drag that in, in the inspector. Now the input manager, we're actually going to update this or turn it on or off. So if, wherever we have is aiming is equal to false on this function, we're just going to basically say, uh, first we got to call upon our player UI manager. So up here we'll say player UI manager, player UI manager. And then on awake, we can say player UI manager equals find object of type player UI manager. We do this because there should only be one player UI manager in the entire scene at any given time and no more. And then down here, we can simply say player UI manager dot crosshair dot set active false. And we do this wherever it says is aiming as false and wherever it says true, we change the false to a true. So when you're aiming, it will enable the crosshairs to appear on the screen in the center. And when you are not aiming, it will make the crosshair just hide temporarily. So if we save that now and go back into our game and hit play, if I drag the crosshair here in the inspector and then hit play, you'll notice that when we, oh, you might get this error. This error is actually because we made a UI element, just hit replace the old input system with a new one. That's perfectly normal. 
Um, we have an event system now, that's why. So now if we go into the game and we right click, there we go, we have a crosshair and our character looks in the direction we're aiming. In the future, we're gonna make it so he looks dramatically up or dramatically down. We're gonna do that by adding some more um, IK constraints, but this is fine for the prototype. I wanna to get to the shooting part and then we can polish the way the aiming looks. But right now in the scene view, if you check this out, we actually do bob up and down, it looks really nice. The only thing we have to change in the future is moving our elbows and our hands up and down to match it a bit more. But in the direction we're aiming, we do look that way and our gun and our player's body uh, do give us a little nudge in the proper directions. So if you guys did like this video, be sure to drop a like, leave a comment, and if you're new to the channel, subscribe. If you're feeling super generous, check out my Patreon below, and I will see you guys in the next one where we begin our shooting prototype. And after we're done that, we're going to go back and give the aiming a nice firm polish along with the shooting, and then we're going to move on to zombie AI logic. Okay, guys, I will see you in the next one.